Hey guys, it's Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. Um, it is oh my right after Labor Day 2023. Uh, we are in our brand new code cycle of our 2023 code. Um, it started in June 1st. Most of our cities around here will adopt uh, these codes pretty quick. The state might be a few months, uh, but they pretty much uh, move into that real quickly on expectations um, so my suggestion for you guys that are electricians um, take some classes um, I'm a member of IAEI which is independent of electrical inspectors association um, I am not an inspector though I do some inspection stuff when I look at things for people um, so I do want to encourage you to become part of a group. Uh, your continuing education is really good. So for my SEO guide, this video is going to be about uh, ongoing training. Uh, no, I'm not getting paid from IAEI to do this video. I just wanted to do a quick blog for you guys uh, in the field because I, I want to give you a quick scenario of a mistake that another electrician made, unfortunately. I don't know who they are, and I wouldn't say anyways. Um, we as electricians all make mistakes, of course. But our biggest importance for those, for you guys out there who are trying to get in the field, um, I just joined a gym, uh, another gym that I like better than my other, but one of the guys there at the front desk said he wanted to get into electrical, and uh, he finally did get on with the company, but I gave him some warnings getting into the field um, a lot of people like the idea of being an electrician or the uh, job title but getting into it is a lot of work so I just kind of encouraged him that um, in Colorado you have to go to school one night a week for four years at IEC or some other tri type of trade school and it's independent electrical contractors. It's in Colorado, so I'm assuming it might be nationwide. I don't know. I went there as an apprentice back in uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, and got myself completed. It was not required by the state back then, uh, but now it is required that you have to go for four years. And so my son just started, Jayathan, if you know him on our website, he just graduated high school this last summer. He is now seven weeks into his first year of the school. He did do four summers with me, um, just working in the field a little bit here and there, trying to see if he liked it. Uh, we had to get him registered as an apprentice last year, but none of that counted until he graduated high school. Uh, so for a lot of you guys who are struggling with high school, and the importance of it, um, yeah, I agree. Some of the stuff in high school, they teach you really dumb things, there's no doubt. Uh, a lot of dumb theology of people that are dead is what I call it. Um, but there are good things that you can learn from high school. For me, the subject I flourished in was more math. I was horrible in English. Uh, definitely, uh, I, am, I am dyslexic, just born that way. I don't know what it is. I do have a routine diet to help myself I definitely need a lot of omegas, uh, fish oils and sardines and certain things I eat in my diet to help me with it that I've learned over the years. Um, but a lot of you guys who might be really more hands-on in life and definitely don't want to deal with four, eight, or 12 years of book knowledge, um, and not that I, I didn't want to, I definitely was trying to get in the medical field like my father. Um, he is a perfusionist but I just, I can't do uh, blood. And so it's just, that kind of stuff doesn't work with me. So anyways, for him, um, this gentleman I was talking to at the gym, I just encouraged him. One thing you gotta do is keep track of your time. It is so important. Your bosses, it's not his responsibility to give the time to you. It's your responsibility to keep track of your time as well as him. But you do have to register your time to DORA in Colorado, Department of Regulations Authority, as well as IEC. I'm keeping track of 
service, trim out, rough in, commercial, residential, industrial, which we don't do industrial. Um, so I'm keeping track of a lot of those hours for my son to report it for DORA and IEC. And you have to do that, otherwise you're not helping the person in school. So if you're part of a big machine, a big company, um, it is your responsibility to watch your hours. It's your responsibility to know if you need more residential or commercial. And it's definitely your responsibility to take that opportunity with your boss and make sure that you are getting the knowledge that you need. Now, I do suggest never burn your bridge, ever. Never burn your bridge, no matter how bad the company is. Um, and there are some bad companies out there. There's no doubt about it. I've worked for a few. But there's also, guys, some really good companies out there. Um, and so we're, myself, I pride myself as a good company, but I, I'm not a large company. So yeah, our websites can be deceiving how big we are. And then for me, this is my 20th year uh, starting or being in my business. I just started it. And boy, I've seen the good, bad, the ugly. Uh, I've seen the markets go up and down. I, I, it's just, it's not easy meeting new people every day. So if you're going to be an electrician in the future to be in service, uh, one boss told me it's really important that you understand. You got to put it together to understand how to service it. You got to know the code in order to understand how to deal with it and then how to bid it. Um, and then the code is always changing every 36 months. You got to read your book. You got to go to classes. You got to turn in your continuing education credits too, which I do. Uh, I think it's required 28 to 30 hours here in Colorado. I think I'd sometimes do 32 to 40. I just enjoy the extra classes. I also enjoy going to the groups. A lot of guys just go on Zoom though and they, they get their PEUs, but there's not a lot of contact with other people. Um, I don't tend to like that. I do spend more to go down to a hotel and rub elbows with other guys, but I get to meet some of my inspectors and I get to see perspective of where they come from on a daily basis if uh you know certain codes like anyway so this one electrician who just wired this job out in hudson he did not follow up um it definitely was a class two division one which is under dust particles it does lay out that emt it doesn't even state or pvc is acceptable um it basically was saying imc conduit and if you don't know what that rigid conduit cost right now in this market that's super expensive then he had to have seal offs on both sides i did talk to the inspector on behalf because the guy did the work and had seven three phase 480 volt under 30 amp disconnects for these small motors but he never got everything with an x4 rating on dust proof so guess what the raceway that went 25 foot high in a two inch all the way back to the gear it was like a 4,000 amp gear and when he sent that 200 amp breaker that way, he never had all of that sealed. It was done in EMT and it was set screw fittings. So I called the inspector and said, do you guys allow it to cut the conduit to take off the set screw part that crimped and then put in compression fittings since compression is sometimes dust proof. He said that they didn't think they'd allow it. If they consider class two division one, um, it doesn't state that you can use compressible fittings with EMT. So he said that at that point, because it's at four or 5,000 amps and it is three phase, they needed an electrical engineer to design it and they never got it. So that guy got it all done, went to pass inspection and failed and they wanted it all ripped out. Um, imagine the bill, because I know the price, but that price probably would have only covered material if he had done it correctly. So guys, I think it's really important to understand that if you're bidding a job, I tend to tell people you gotta have engineer drawings you got to go that way. So sometimes I tend to stay that way in residential at times because it's just easier to deal with, not those problems. If you can have an electrical engineer with as-built prints, then there's a lot of stuff there. But most customers, they don't want to pay for it. They just expect you to give them a bid. So yeah, you can go out, give them a bid and say, hey, here's what you're going to have to anticipate from here on out. But we don't do that for you and you have to pay for that. Um, there are times though I've referred electrical engineers and they went out to bed and the GC did the job instead of the customer. And guess what? They had an electrician already and it felt like a waste of my time. So when a lot of people call and say, I would like a bid, they have no idea what that entitles. They're just looking for a number and how soon. 
but you have to direct them in a way. So Fort Collins and Loveland, Northern Colorado, even Denver have rules that if it's over single phase, that's three phase, one extra leg. I don't see why one extra leg is that big of a deal. It's all voltage. But if it's over a certain ampacity as well of 200 amps, you cannot do the electrical. But I have stuff down in Old Town Loveland that's 150 amp single phase, smaller than a house, same phasing as a house, and same voltage. But they consider it commercial because of the street it's on and the zoning. So keep in mind, guys, that it gets more restrictive as the years go by between utilities, bad workmanship, bad electricians, or people just making mistakes. Um, so anyways, I want to encourage you guys, if you're looking at becoming an electrician, I'll do some more videos on what the expectation is. But boy, you better be in it for a long haul. This is not you being a barista learning coffee. This is definitely a career. Not that that's not a career, but this is a career that is ongoing education and it demands your time and you're never home. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. Hopefully give you some sobering thoughts about being an electrician. Take care.